So, welcome again, <coughs> uh, everyone. So, this uh, presentation is um, uh, also on accessing uh, climate uh, scenarios by using another platform that was developed within uh, the business projects. Uh, this platform is called uh, Climate for Impact or C4I. And uh, this platform has been designed to ease access to climate model data. And uh, uh, it is to have a platform that is uh, more targeted toward uh, end users, not necessarily climate uh, researchers. So what is the Climate for Impact portal? Uh, so we can see a screenshot of the main uh, a landing page of Climate for Impact on the right hand side with the URL. Um, so this is a platform for uh, also for researchers to explore climate data and perform analysis. Um, uh, when we say researchers here, it's more targeted toward the uh, impact researchers, not uh, climate uh, modeling uh, research researchers. But uh, both uh, uh those kind of use, uh, those uh, uh, specific users are using the platform um, it connects to ESGF web services so it's a front end to the those services so behind the scene uh, the climate for impact will uh, use ESGF uh, uh, data nodes uh, services and so it uses the search the catalog the security for uh, access and uh, it gives access to all the projects and experiments that are available on ESGF. It's, uh, it makes available visualization uh, using a software called Adagot. And uh, the software also provides uh, data transformation and extraction capabilities. Uh, the system also uh, enables uh, uh, on-demand uh, analysis uh, to perform calculations. Um, uh, calculations are climate indices calculation. Uh, it uses the ICCLIM open source software that was also developed within the ESNS project. Uh, it provides data sub-selection, so spatial selection or temporal selections. Uh, it also provides a personal store for uh, storing processing results. Um, it's a platform that is in production. It is currently deployed in the cloud. And it's uh, one of the official semi data dissemination portal. Uh, so it uses the ESGF uh, uh, services. Uh, as I explained in the first presentation, there are 30 data nodes, and um, on those data nodes, there are 18 located in Europe, provided by 17 institutions. And this is coordinated by ISNES2. And the, um, on the right hand side, you, you can see that the, um, uh, the ISNES uh, Climate for Impact is really tailored for end users and it supports on-demand processing, as I explained. It has been supported by many, uh, by several projects, not only ESNES, but also the CLIPC uh, project that was, uh, that took place a few years ago. And all of this is funded by the European Commission. There are many uh, uh, sessions that have been organized to, mainly to disseminate the fact that the platform exists, but also to receive feedback from users to um, uh, adapt the, the, and make evolve the, this Climate for Impact platform according to the user needs. And there are different categories of users with different types of needs. And so to gather those um, uh, feedbacks, we organize sprinter sessions or web seminars or webinars like this one or specific classrooms. And the goal is to always keep the users in the loop and to show new features and also to gather some ideas for um, having this platform evolve. 
in this, uh, if you go to the Climate for Impact platform, there are several tabs uh, at the top in gray that you can see. You have home, data discovery for the search, uh, some downscaling capabilities, documentation, help, and you can also sign in to get access to uh, data. In the documentation uh, tab, if you click on that, you have several categories of help uh, uh, on different subjects. So uh, there's some guidance and some example use cases, uh, background information uh, about climate in general, climate scenarios, climate models, climate model data. Uh, this is very interesting for first time users and also to get some more details for more uh, advanced users. There's a glossary uh, uh, and some more information. One of the most important features of the Climate for Impact portal is the easier search. Uh, this, uh, if you go to the data discovery tab uh, in the search uh, sub tab, uh, you have a, a view of uh, the most important filters uh, being shown. So to make it as easier for the users, uh, the most uh, used uh, filters are uh, shown uh, with more emphasis. So you have, uh, for example, when you uh, go to the search page, you will see this uh, quick select project where you can select the semi project you are interested in, could be CMIP 6, CMIP 5. Uh, there's a cortex, uh, so um, a selection that you can do or observ observation. You can see there that you have more information than in the ESGF data node. Um, so it helps you to drill down the search results uh, uh, differently and hopefully uh, uh, in an easier way. There are two tips that are being shown for to explain acronyms. So there are quick select menus, uh, not only for the project, but also for the uh, parameter. Um, there's a complete documentation available uh, uh, easily next to the different data sets. Uh, you can preview and quick look the data and you exp can export the search list to uh, also to a CSV, so to a text uh, file. And this is a, 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 the quick select parameter. So you can see that you have the most used variables uh, being presented here uh, with different categories, uh, temperature, precipitation, humidity, wind, and so on. So it's really, uh, you have the long name and the acronym being presented. So it's a, uh, uh, more convenient way to drill down uh, your search. Um, as I explained, there are many data sets that are available. So all those available in the SGF are available in Termit for Impact. You could also use your own data set if you have a, a specific uh, server make, making accessible those data sets to the internet. It's using a protocol called called OpenDAP. So if you have a specific uh, location in, in the internet for a data set, you can also use climate for impact for data outside ESGF. On the left hand side, you have an example of quick looks of uh, CMIP5 data. And on the right hand side, you have uh, uh, Cortex data being shown. So as explained earlier, you have the personal uh, user space. Uh, it's a basket feature, which is similar to uh, what is available on the data nodes, except that you can store uh, remote data links and you can also have your own data sets uh, uh, being the result of uh, data processing uh, being done on the platform. Uh, you can also, as uh, the same as the EHF data node, you can also have a script based download to allow uh, the download multiple files. Uh, 
uh, you can also upload your own file in your basket uh, to be used in processing or visualization and um, uh, you can store uh, different uh, file formats. The processing interface is the uh, very interesting because it's not uh, something uh, available uh, uh, in the ESGF data node. Uh, it's using a interface that is generated from the processing uh, uh, workflows. Uh, it is lightweight, lightweight, um, uh, and then you can. Uh, in this processing uh, interface, you can uh, use uh, links to the your basket file to your files in your basket, and you can have a preview of those files uh, also in the interface. There are also easier to use interface for processing. Uh, there are there's a wizard for subsetting and regarding climate data. Uh, it's called the convert and subset. And in this uh, wizard, you can uh, select a, a data file using its uh, uh, location uh, URL. And um, you can uh, specify a bonding box uh, either uh, by entering the numbers of the uh, latitude and longitude or selecting the area uh, user using your mouse. And you can also select the time, uh, start date and end date that you want to select. And then you can select the output format for this uh, convert and subset. So on the right hand side, you see the result after doing uh, this uh, convert and subset using the parameters shown on the left. It can use also your own vector data to uh, 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 render uh, uh, products. For example, uh, you see a screenshot of a, a product that was generated using uh, JSON for uh, different uh, specific regions. And um, it, uh, it is quite useful to uh, do operations like statistics per polygon or area extraction. For example, if you have a water river basins or uh, if you have a specific uh, mountainous area that you want to study, uh, it is uh, quite interesting. You can also uh, do operations uh, on specific uh, regions or countries. And then you can uh, calculate uh, the average, the mean, the max, or any other statistics that you uh, that are useful for you. Uh, the output uh, can be CSV table or NetCDF files. There's also the on-demand uh, climate indices uh, calculations. Uh, so as I said, this uh, processing is done using the ACIClim uh, open source software. You can see at the bottom of the uh, page the URL uh, about uh, that shows some information about this software. It has been developed also within mostly within the easiness uh, project. Uh, it implements all the ECA D indices. Uh, this is a collection of uh, indices that are climate indices that are standardized so with the same definition. And those are the most used uh, climate indices. Uh, and uh, those were uh, defined with uh, different partners uh, over the world. So you have different kind of indices. You have indices based on the temperature information, uh, on heat and cold. You have also indices uh, uh, related to precipitation and humidity, or indices that combine different parameters. And uh, you have some example of indices, uh, for example, uh, the number of warm days or summer days, and they correspond to specific uh, definition. 
when you use the on-demand climate and disease uh, calculation in the climate for impact portal you can also change the threshold for example summer days the de standard definitions are days with max temperatures greater than 25 but maybe in your region it's colder and you don't get much over 25 degrees then you can adjust the threshold and on the reverse for example if you are in spain or mediterranean uh, region then maybe your max temperature uh, greater than 25 can happen all over the year so it's you must uh, increase the threshold so we can do that as well so i will go through with you with uh, an example on uh, calculating uh, summer days uh, so if i want to do that using the climate for impact platform uh, so the what i will present you here is to calculate the number of days where the maximum temperature is above 25 degrees per european country based on the experiment rcp 2.6 in cm5 and using the climate model myroc 5 which is a specific uh, climate model uh, of course for doing uh, impact studies you should always use uh, many different climate models and different scenarios but i show you here how to do the processing for one uh, so you know how it works so for the climate for impact you need to uh, sign in so you if you don't have an account you need to create an account uh, for now uh, to have uh, all the feature you need to create an account uh, BADC uh, SIDA account uh, to use the special feature of climate for impact once you create a account with uh, SIDA BADC then you can sign in uh, in climate for impact so then the first step is to search the data you are and uh, you will need to use and that you are interested in so in the project uh, filter you select uh, semip 5 in the parameter you can use the quick select to select the maximum temperature uh, because the NDC is based on the maximum maximum temperature the time frequency uh, you select is daily uh, experiment you select RCP 26 the model uh, is mark uh, 5 the ensemble I will use is I1, I1 P1 and I select the latest version of this uh, ensemble then uh, in the results I have uh, one file you can see at the bottom of the screenshot on the right hand side and then uh, I add it to the basket then I go to the processing tab and I select IC Clim simple indicator calculation once I go there I have the uh, uh, I need to select uh, which NDC climate NDC I want to uh, calculate so I say SU and it's uh, written that it stands for summer days I leave the threshold to 25 because uh, this is what I want for this uh, calculation I select uh, the file from my basket uh, in the interface to add this file uh, to be used as the processing input and then I click start processing and when it is done I have uh, the screenshot uh, shown on the right hand side uh, it says the, the processing uh, succeeded in green and it's showing a report on the processing and I can click and have a quick look uh, to visualize the output the output file is also stored in the in my uh, personal user space for further calculation or for download i can also uh, use the quick look interface to to uh, do some time series but now it's not finished because uh, okay i calculated the summer days over the whole uh, globe but i want to do a, a polygon uh, uh, calculation because I want statistics on uh, individual countries separated so I go to processing again and I select uh, polygon overlay 
and uh, uh, in the input file uh, graded there, I choose the latest result uh, I had with the SU from your from my basket, and uh, this is stored automatically in the most recent folders on the under WPS Scratch. WPS stands for uh, for a web processing service and it's an inside that folder I will have the output file from the uh, uh, processing uh, software and uh, the time range I select uh, star so to use the whole uh, time range and the variable that I must select is su because it was what was uh, calculated and then I click uh, start processing at the end, I will get uh, what is shown on the uh, right hand side with the different countries statistics for the SU. Uh, uh, so the sum number of summer days, uh, uh, so the number of days greater than 25. So I have the statistics on the right hand side. So this, this, this is uh, the result of the calculation. So to summarize, uh, uh, I had uh, the daily maximum temperature shown uh, the first screenshot. Then I calculated the number of summer days, and then I uh, used uh, some polygons to calculate specific statistics inside those polygons to have the uh, intended results. So this ends my uh, presentation. So, I will um, do a live uh, uh, presentation on ac how to access the climate frame pack. I will not show you the whole use case, but I will show you how to uh, uh, access the search interface. Uh, so, of course, all this work has been done over uh, the course of uh, uh, many years in the business uh, different projects and uh, many people uh, have been involved in uh, the building of this platform but there are main contacts available to answer your specific questions you can use the contact form on the climate for impact but you can also use our direct email there are two uh, people uh, at KNMI that are that have been involved uh, significantly in the, the this platform uh, development so Martin Flicker and Vim from the surf and myself so I will um, stop sharing and share my uh, web uh, browser maybe we can answer a few yeah. questions already yeah. uh, in the meantime yes yes okay there, um, there was one for uh, Paola from Peter Kalverla. Can you add your own packages to the ECAS Jupiter Lab environment? Yeah, uh, if uh, for uh, um, your own packages means uh, uh, new libraries, uh, uh, no. Um, I can say that on ECAS Lab uh, there are already available uh, a lot of uh, um, scientific libraries for data manipulation like Pandas, NumPy, Desk uh, and many other graphic libraries as the ones we saw during the tuto tutorial. Anyway, if a library should not be uh, available, the user can request uh, the ECAS administrators to download it. Uh, but it should be a library for data analytics or data science. So it's not allowed to uh, load your own packages, but the ECAS administrator can uh, do it for you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And um, a, question, a few questions from Peter Zabo, if I pronounce it well. Um, he asks, why are there several versions of the outline, uh, outputs outline from the Climate for Impact portal if the latest one should be used? Oh, Christian is already okay. answering so, it. So uh, I will fi finalize the writing after. But uh, yeah. it's because there are, uh, those are available in the SGF data notes. So the goal is to present all the data files that are available. 
And also, um, if you did all your study using a specific version, and then, for example, you would need to get one more parameter uh, to fin finalize your study, you want to use the same version that you had before, not necessarily the latest, because it could be different for some reason. Uh, so those are the two reasons why you have uh, several versions. Okay, thank you. And he also asked if we are planning to include the EOPS grid data sets as observations. Uh, if, uh, I'm not sure whether it's available yet. I think uh, that something is, is available already on EOPS. Yeah, it, it should be available. Uh, yeah. Yes, because it's graded data, because climate for impact is made for graded data. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it is available uh, uh, through the open DAP protocol or ESG mm -hmm. data node, it is available in climate for impact. Yeah, okay. And then if there are new versions, I know it may sometimes take some time before the newest version becomes available. But in principle, they will be made available through um, uh, ESGF data nodes and therefore also through the Climate for Impact portal. And because it's automatic, the Climate for Impact will always yeah. present what is available on the data node. Yeah, yeah. If you have any problems finding it, uh, Peter, then uh, maybe you can contact us and we can help you to find it. Yes. And he also says that MESAN is good too, but it's not pure observations. I do not know if these, this data set is available. I didn't check if it is uh, available on the ESGF data nodes. Yeah. Or on if you have the open DAP URL of the of a MESAN uh, data set, then you can also use Climate for Impact. Yeah. But I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he has another question. I might have missed it, he says, but can you have outputs on a grid, gridded level or not regions? No, not regions are uh, optional. It was the last step, but the climate for impact will always use the uh, resolution of the data. So if you have Cordex data at uh, 10 kilometer, uh, climate for impact will display that uh, with the native resolution. The nuts is just uh, to be handy, or, or the polygons are handy if you want to, uh, specific statistics over a larger region. Yeah. Okay, thank you. These were the questions, I think. Yes, okay, uh, please proceed. Yes, so to be, we don't have much time left, but it's, in a way it's quick because I don't do um, full, uh, the full use case. Okay, so. Let me share my web browser. So this is the climate for impact uh, model that we uh, have explained. So we have the uh, the current uh, version, operational version. As I said, you need uh, if you want to do some uh, uh, processing, and also access uh, semi five data and Cordex, you need uh, uh, an account. But if you just search data, just to have quick looks, you don't need uh, to, to sign in. So as I said, you need to have this specific CIDA BLDC account. Google is available, but uh, if you use that, you don't have ESGF supported, so it's limited use. So I will sign in using the CIDA BLDC account. If you don't have, just register here uh, too. So we, uh, sign in with my account. I already did, so it did. It doesn't ask again my uh, user. Just need to authorize. So I am signed in. So you can see my uh, identifier, my climate for impact ID. So I go to uh, data discovery tab, and uh, you can see, uh, as in the screenshot, the different. Uh, the quick select project. So the first thing is to select the project you are interested in. So I can select uh, CMIP6, which is the latest uh, uh, latest climate simulations. So you see I have a very large number of data, tes data sets, 6 million data sets. So I need to drill down my uh, search. Uh, 
I could still export to CSV, but uh, it's not really useful. So um, I want to select the frequent frequency first. So you have the most used frequency here. So most of the people will be using mo monthly or daily data. So I can click uh, daily. So you see, see the, uh, you see here the selected filters that are uh, activated for now. So you see the number of data sets is going down. So that's good news. So I go to parameter. So I can be interested also in the maximum temperature called uh, tax max. So I click that and automatically it's updated down. So we have to do down more my uh, uh, um, Now I want to select the scenarios, the climate scenarios. So, so I don't see them here. So side is the the institutions. So this is not what I want. I can show all the filters. So it's getting all the facets. So it can, sometimes it can be slow because the ESDF search can take a lot of time to uh, to show the filters. So it's getting a, a problem uh, right now. Uh, because it's quite slow to get all those facets from the ESGF CMIP6. Uh, so we are working on a new version of Climate Fire Pack that will not have uh, this uh, dependency and slow down because of the, the search. So we have all those different fil filters. So uh, uh, you if, if I go to experiment ID, I will uh, have all the different experiments in the CMIP6. You have seen that there is a large correction of experiments. And I can see my SSPs here, only with the number of data sets. So maybe I'm interested in this one, which is the large increase in green greenhouse gas concentrations. You can click that. So the search will update below with the uh, this SSP 585. So it takes, it takes a while because it's uh, also gathering all the results and also verifies that the, those files are available. So this is why it takes some time. So I won't drill down more. So I have 16 data sets, so it's quite small. So I just click this to expand the data set. So sometimes there are problems. So it shows you already the problem before you go further. So this one is available. Uh, so I have the catalog URL. I can uh, click on that. So I can see the, the catalog itself. So it's mainly quite technical. Uh, what is more interesting here is the, the catalog contains uh, a list of files. So you have all those files with their specific size, so 400 megabytes. I can view them or download, download them or put them in the basket. So I can view. So this is what I want to show, is to show you the quick look that is available. So uh, I can see the, the different uh, information about the variables. Um, sometimes there are, uh, the quick look is not always available, like this one. And uh, the specific variable test max uh, uh, is also, uh, uh, I, I can also uh, download the file here. So it's really, it's really depending on the uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, mainly because the first example here is that it's in the catalog, but in fact, the server hosting the data is not available, so I cannot access the, the file. And here, the, it was a grid, uh, different grid that I cannot view with the viewer, but I can still download the file if I want. So this ends my live uh, presentation. Uh, maybe I can just show you uh, quickly the documentation, which is very interesting. 
I have the documentation and background in topics, and there you have information, for example, in climate models, the global models, and you have general information about climate models. And it's really a summary, a very brief summary of the uh, how it works, but you have uh, external links uh, to get more information. Um, and some questions in the frequently asked question sections, for example, which GCM is best and how to seek one, which is a very common question among users. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. And um, before finishing, I'd like to uh, bring under your attention a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, the transnational assess activity. That's an activity of the ESNF3 project and it provides access to supercomputers hosting uh, many, many climate model data. And uh, it also gives you the possibility to do data near processing, which makes it more efficient. Um, I don't know the details about it, but um, the processing capabilities uh, that are available are from uh, four European centers, from uh, the, the German DKRZ, from the French CNRS IPSL, the, uh, the Brit uh, British uh, STFC, Jasmin, and from the Italian CMCC. And if you are interested in this, or want more information about this, please let me know and I will refer you to uh, the, the persons who know more about it. Um, there will be a call later on um, and then people can, um, can send in proposals for this. It doesn't mean that everyone will get access to it or free access to it uh, because we will make a selection. Um, but uh, the, the option is available uh, if you're interested in that. And it's, well, it, it's free access uh, to the, um, the computing service and uh, we aim to reduce the data transfer issues. Uh, you get direct access to many, many climate model data um, and you can run your own scripts and Jupyter notebooks and speed up the computer, computational analysis. So if it's interesting for you, please contact us. And the second uh, thing uh, that I want to bring on the attention is that we also organize some, uh, some schools. Uh, one is planned for the end of October this year in Prague, and it's uh, on climate data and impacts. Uh, we're still doubting a little bit when to organize it, so we're probably it's one of the last weeks of October. Uh, but due to the COVID-19, uh, we don't know whether there will be uh, still or again travel restrictions, uh, but I hope to announce it soon. We have place for 30 persons and uh, uh, well, if it's open, then I will, uh, we will announce it on the website and through other uh, media. Um, if we have to postpone the autumn school, this autumn school, then we will at least organize some webinars at that time. Um, so I hope that might be interesting for you too. Okay, then um, that's it for the moment. I'd like to thank the speakers um, for their uh, presentations. And uh, I'd like to thank all the participants for, uh, for joining us.